Each October, the Global Network Against Weapons and Nuclear Power in Space organizes Keep Space for Peace Week to bring attention to the need to stop the ever-advancing militarization and nuclearization of space. This year, 2024, Keep Space for Peace Week will be between October 5th to October 12th. Stay tuned until the end of the video to learn more about our annual organizing event to let the world know about the heavy push to militarize space. Welcome to the Global Network. Please support us by clicking the like button and subscribing to our social media accounts to stay up to date with our content. If you want to go further, consider joining our organization by visiting our website, spaceforpeace.org. The U.S. and NATO forces have increasingly been militarizing outer space, where today, every military operation in any country, especially involved in its wars, are directed from the heavens above. In the meantime, NATO has rapidly expanded over the past few decades. But the U.S.-NATO alliance also has alliances with other nations who aren't officially in NATO, but are effectively a part of it. And this expansion of military alliances and domination also has divided the world and been mainly directed at a few nations where these tensions have the potential for devastating global impacts. Much of the US and NATO sphere of influence are directed towards nations like China, Russia, and even Iran. Without even knowing these tensions on a granular level, we can still understand that these tensions can lead to worldwide disaster. The US and China are the two largest economies in the world. The US and Russia maintain the largest nuclear stockpiles in the world. And the tension towards Iran can unleash serious consequential results, which will primarily impact the region, but will also trickle throughout the entire world. In a recent Space News article, it said, even as the community of nations on Earth fractures further into rival blocks, an effort to build greater cohesion in space is gathering momentum. The extent to which this succeeds or not may set the course for global peace and security for the foreseeable future. Diplomats, along with military, industry, civil, and academic experts, are gathering in Geneva this week for the annual Outer Space Security Conference hosted by the United Nations Institute for Disarmament Research. Driving the agenda? How to build cooperation across the international community as it works to prevent an arms race in outer space, or PAROS. But the diplomatic efforts on PAROS have failed for the past four decades, and as this diplomatic approach has failed, threats have actually increased. In the recently published Global Counterspace Capabilities Report, it shows more countries are developing technologies to harm or disrupt space systems rather than countries working to secure peace in outer space. And this trust and commitments to existing arms control measures are faltering. A main part of the alliances between and with the US and NATO, from Israel and Ukraine to the Indo-Pacific partners like South Korea and Japan, is to increase their overall influence and domination in outer space at the disadvantage of nations like China, Russia, and Iran, not to seek peace, whatever that means to the fat cats in Washington. And these technologies which are being developed certainly pose a risk to most life on Earth. In July, White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said that NATO allies and the Indo-Pacific partners will launch four new joint projects which will be on Ukraine, artificial intelligence, disinformation, and cybersecurity. And all of these joint projects are aimed to develop domination in outer space. And so, with the goal of bringing awareness to these dangerous tensions which are increasing day by day, the Global Network organizes its annual event to shift some of that awareness towards the growing importance of outer space. Keep Space for Peace Week is organized and campaigns are started in many places around the world, from the US and Canada to India and South Korea. But this isn't enough, and we need more groups to participate in this annual event of awareness. And every year, we have a particular issue that we focus towards. 
For instance, in previous years, we've had Space Week themes focused on the dangers of World War III or the privatization of outer space by billionaires. This year, we are focusing on stopping space in the use of war and genocide, especially in light of the tragic events in Palestine where Israel, with the heavy support of the US, has committed a genocidal campaign towards the Palestinian people for nearly a year now. We ask that any group, even individuals from around the world or from any country, reach out to the global network to learn how they can participate in organizing an event in their local area or even throughout their own country to bring this awareness to the people of their area. We need all hands on deck to illuminate this issue for the public who are now massively paying for the militarization of space and what the aerospace industry brags is the largest industrial project in human history. You can contact the global network on our website by going to spaceforpeace.org, then clicking the menu tab that says contact us. Updates on the events for Space Week around the world will be shared on our website. You can also visit Bruce Gagnon's blog to stay updated on these events and more at spaceforpeace.blogspot.com. Let's all keep space for peace.